Welcome to another episode of DD on the Spot. As always, I'm your host, Ryan Johnson. Before we get into it with our guest, well, again, everyone, it's our third time being on, so everyone should recognize her, but the last time that we talked, she told me that she didn't think she would ever do a show ever again, and you know, how a year has changed since we last had her on, because she just competed in a, in a show again for the first time, and how many years has it been? Six years. Six years, so we're having her back on to, you know, talk about that, and just give us an update on what she's been up to, but most importantly, thank you so much for coming back on. Oh, my pleasure, Ryan. Anytime. Well, I ask this question every single time. What is the weather like today? Just to start things off with. Well, it's close to 90. And uh, after I get done, we'll be working on a project with my husband outside. So, yeah, it's just never ending 80, 90, sunny every day. And we need rain very badly. I call rain air washing. And we need it badly. It's okay, though. I mean... That's just a little too high for me, but I mean, it's like in the forties right now, which is, you know, I will probably be having a bonfire at my house later tonight, but it's just, yeah, it's just the extremes in weathers, but yeah, but that's what, that's what we got to deal with. But I mean, your first show in six years, how did that happen? Well, you know, I thought at, at, in 2015, when I did my last one, that would be the end and I had enough of it and I was really ready to just have a great life. I was retired and and uh, we lived in Fargo, North Dakota at the time, 2015. And then in 2016, we moved to, you know, Montgomery, Alabama for a couple of years. And then in 2018, we were over in Tucson. So that's where we are now, Tucson area. And, uh, you know, it was just a lot of moving, a lot of changing. And I just didn't really think I had the focus. But we've been here now over three years. And I have a friend of mine out in Long Island. And we have been in touch, you know, over the last couple of years. And uh, when we saw the show come out, it was called Legion Sports Fest. And it was last year was the first year they had the Masters. And I kind of watched it, but it was right in the middle of COVID. And so they changed the venues three times. And then a year ago, you know, my gym is all closed for, you know, a month and then six weeks. And I just didn't, I needed my, you know, equipment. So then my friend Denise and I, we were talking and we said, oh, look at this. If they have a 60 plus figure and uh, we knew we had a few people that would be interested in doing it that were all going to be 65. So another friend of hers contacted the promoter and he said, OK, if you can get five girls to commit, I'll add it. So we got five girls to commit and, you know, we had to pay a small registration fee. And I, you know, I thought, well, I'd rather I think I better just put some, you know, I said I was going to do it and now I had to commit. And so I committed right then and there and we all registered and they had six people six gals over 65 that registered. And uh, I was pretty excited because um, I was in the right you know, frame of mind. Everything was you know, good at home. We weren't moving any place. <laughs> All the gyms were open. I thought, heck, why not? And so um, that's how it happened. It was just, you know, just one, one afternoon we were talking and we said, let's just do it. So I did it. And I've been, you know, I've been following, I follow the, the pro shows you know, every year, the main ones that I would probably be in. And I look at the girls and I thought, hmm, okay, you know, I think I can do something like that. So there, it, we, I committed around the 1st of April, April 15th, and, and then took it from there. Wow. And I mean, what was that like sort of getting back into that lifestyle after six? Because obviously, I mean, you still stayed in shape and you're sort of, you know, in shape year round, but getting back into sort of that you know, just bodybuilding lifestyle, was that a struggle at all at first? Or was it something that, you know, since you were so used to it from doing it prior that it didn't really, it wasn't really as much of a challenge? It wasn't too, too bad in the beginning because I did it on my own. So we're looking at, you know, middle of April and I have to say, I, I think you and I have talked before. I'm kind of an ectomorph. I'm just really a slender person. And I, I looked at myself and I says, man, I just don't think I would even have a chance. I just don't want to be last in the show. So I decided I'm going to just put on a, a few pounds. I did like a dirty bulk for a couple of weeks. And then I kind of cleaned it up and I managed to put on you know, like about a pound a month. But so that was April, May and June and July. Oh, and then uh, over Mother's Day, the first weekend in May, I actually was golfing and I tore my uh golfer's elbow tendon, that common flexor tendon, and I was swinging my seven wood and all of a sudden, boom, I could just feel a zing go up my arm. So that set me back pretty, pretty significantly, you know, for about three months. 
but I could do, you know, legs. And so anyway, so getting back to how I got into it, it was really not that hard. I mean, I just said, you know, I can do this for six months. I can do anything for six months. So um, I just, you know, started to really intensify my workouts and I, you know, ate a lot. I probably was eating, well, I kept a chart and I was probably eating about 29 to 3,000 3, calories a day. It was a lot. And uh, I just did my thing. I worked around my injury and I went to physical therapy like once a week and got that. And then I actually tried a new medical procedure called platelet rich plasma. It's an injection where, well, first they draw your blood, then they centrifuge it and they take off the serum and the buffy coat and the buffy coat is the platelets. And so then they make kind of a, a, a platelet rich plasma and then they inject it right back into the tendon poke holes in the tendon to create the inflammatory response. It's just really fascinating. So I did that because I thought, what do I have to lose? So I did that uh, you know, in the middle of May and, and I couldn't do really anything for a couple of weeks on, with my arms. I mean, I couldn't turn my steering wheel. I couldn't open a lid. I couldn't even barely bend my elbow, but I made pretty good progress. And then after about six weeks, I said, hmm, Tendons usually heal about 85% of their normal, so I'm going to do it again. So I did it again. And uh, within like about August 1st, you know, I was golfing again. Everything was going well. And then I hired my prep coach out of California. But, uh, you know, I kept on, kept on doing it. And, you know, every day I had my little five, six days of uh, working out. And, and I did really virtually no cardio. I just wanted to put on, you know, I just wanted a lean bulk. And so I, you know, I got up to like, you know, 129. I'm normally about 123. <laughs> hey, you know, yeah, she's one of those, like we said, ectomorphs that she just stays lean year round. It's a blessing and a curse. You know, it's both of them. But I mean, what do you think has been one body part that you've improved on the most from when you last competed to now? Oh, glutes for sure. Glutes. And my prep coach had me um, do them three times a week. You know, I, I was just every possible lunge um deadlifts all kinds of band work i mean just reverse hypers back extensions just every possible thing i was doing three times a week and someday i'm going to put a post on it's going to be probably a little bit much but i took a before and an after picture and i have to say they really looked so much better but the lagging part was hamstrings that is just the hardest muscle to develop but my quads were amazing. I mean, I started out doing leg extensions at maybe 70 pounds. And by right before the show, I was extending. I made it up to 110 pounds. So I really made vast improvements in my quads. Um, and, of course, I did when I, when I got the go-ahead to start working my back more, I added pull-ups. I had, had bands. I did daily pull-ups out in my garage. I have a bar out there. And I took a clothesline pole and bands. And I was doing bands out in my garage every day, just dailies. So I really wanted to have a wider back, you know, better rear delts, keep the waist tiny, and then, you know, have nice high, you know, athletic glutes, not big glutes, but athletic ones. Yep. But... Well, and for anyone listening to this for the first time and hasn't listened to their podcast before, she is basically the pull-up queen where, I mean, she's just, she just absolutely kills it. Have there, and you know, like she told us before, it does get boring after a while, so you have to come up with new ways. Have there been any new, like, challenges or any new ways to get your, your pull-ups in that you've found in the last year? Uh, well, you know, I have to kind of not do them for many, many months because of the injury. But, you know, there's some challenges out there now where you, you know, pull up and hold and then come back down and hold and... So basically just, you know, variations on, on the same thing, but you know, I'm sure I haven't really looked that closely yet, but <laughs> well, I, I see, I see, really... you, I see you got the rings as well that you use too. So it's not just the normal bar. You can also switch it up. That's right. Right. Yeah. I love the rings. And I mean, does, so as opposed to your training, let's say last year, was anything really mixed up other than obviously, I mean, with the, the elbow, you couldn't really train as much, but like with your training per se, did you find that you were training maybe a little bit more or was it just being more consistent? Oh no. After I got in with my prep coach, August 1st, I was training almost seven days a week. By the time I had to get everything in that he wanted me to get in. And, uh, like I said, it, I just learned to be, it was like every day was groundhog day. You know, you get up eat, lift, eat, you know, stretch, eat, cardio, eat. It's just 
day after day, but I knew I could do it. And uh, I was, I was, my training was very intense, very intense compared to what I was. <laughs> And I was I don't think I I don't think I'm trained that hard ever. Well, hey, I mean, and it and it definitely shows. And I mean, nutrition wise, like you said, you were eating more. What were some of the extra things that you would just add into your diet in order to get those calories up? Well, this is interesting because when I started with my prep coach, I said I really don't want to eat a lot of chicken and turkey because that's kind of what he has on. He has a six meal a day, and you know, three of them were turkey or chicken. And I said I'm going to try to be vegetarian. So I, I still had my eggs and my oats and a lot. I mean, I had like probably five, six different kinds of nuts. My macros were about, I probably had 125 grams of fat every day, two, 200, 200 or more protein and weigh, you know, 300 carbs. I mean, I was just, but I was burning them like, you know, I'm like a furnace. And, uh, and so towards the end, though, I said, I'm going to con- I'm going to consolidate these into five instead of six, because I just didn't have any time to get everything done and, and still eat six meals a day. But then towards the end, maybe the last couple of months, I did add, you know, decent turkey and ground turkey, but everything. And I had a lot of lentils and black beans and rice, you know, the plant based and a lot of plant based, a lot of veggie burgers instead of all that chicken. Which I mean, yeah, I totally support you on that. I mean, I at, at a point in my journey too, I was just like, I don't want any more chicken. I mean, it's had I'd have to like dump it in like ketchup or something like that just to give it, you know, some just teeny tiny bit of flavor. But I mean, six years away from bodybuilding, that is, you know, almost like sixty for most other sports because body is bodybuilding is just so ever changing and ever evolving. What were some of the bigger differences that you saw sort of in the sport from when you last competed in it to now? Well. I have to say that figure has outgrown me. (laughs) And when I first started, and that's kind of why I brought up that other gal that we talked about before we went on air. Back then, figure, when when I started in figure, the judges were told that if you see any girls with striations in their muscles, they would be docked. So that was in 2012. I mean, so nobody, I mean, they had muscles, but they weren't conditioned like they are now. They, they had muscles, but you could barely see them. Then, by the time I got my pro card, things were kind of starting to change. And, you know, the local shows in Fargo and Minneapolis, they were all just basically judged incorrectly because when those winners got to the nationals, they just got blown out of the water. So by 15, um, I remember I did my first pro show and there were six of us and the top three girls looked just like me. We looked like girls. We were we kind of looked like Nicole Wilkins back when she won her first Olympia in 2009, I think it was, or 10. She looked amazing. And and then, um, you know, figure just blew past me. I mean, and, the, and in my show, the three top girls, well, I, out of seven, there were, I was fourth, but the three top girls all got their pro cards in physique or bodybuilding. And so then, of course, bodybuilding and physique has left them behind. So then they go back down to figure and they probably all had 10 to 15 pounds over me. And then the third place girl was shorter, but she was, you know, a little bit more muscular. And then, and then me in the middle and then three, a little bit smaller girls that <clears throat> didn't really have the nice taper or conditioning. But yeah, it was, uh, it's different, totally different. And I knew that going in. I knew that because I thought. They're not drug tested, of course, at the IFBB level. They say that we can be tested anytime, but, you know, of course, nobody is. And so um, it was my coach said, just go and you'll just see who shows up. And, of course, when I saw a couple of the girls show up, I thought, okay, this is not going to be a big W day. (laughs) I mean, I mean, even though it wasn't, what was that feeling like when you got to step up on stage again after being gone for six years? Um. I actually practice in front of my house, in my house, I should say, with a video. So I knew, you know, I knew what to do. I knew where to put my eyes. And then the day before, uh, the night before, of course, we were watching them get the stage ready. And they put carpet on the stage. And I was, you know, I was hoping it would be like wood or some type of a smooth surface. So then, of course, you know, I am always planning. I'm always preparing. I said, I am not going to let this you know, psych me out. So of course I've got my heels 
And I went up there and I walked on the stage and I got a feel for it. I went back to the hotel and I was all practicing in the hallway with my carpet. And when I got on, I was, it was like nothing the next day. And um, I'm so glad I was prepared and did a dry run. I mean, did you have to mix up your posing a lot too? I mean, obviously you probably don't remember really exactly like your exact like posing routine from six years ago, but is it vast? Is it, like the difference wise, was it vastly more different or was it just a little bit more subtly? Well, the quarter turns, you know, they're always, always the same for figure, but the individual presentation now, six years ago, I just did the basics. And now when we got the rules for the um, individual presentation on their website, they said one pose at the back of the stage, walk up, do three more, 45 seconds is your limit. Boom, you're done. And of course, <laughs> when we got there right there that night, the expediter said, go right to the box <laughs> instead of going to the back of the stage. So I said, geez, I don't think that's going to work for me because my opening pose, I needed to walk up. So I said, I'm just going to, I'm just going to walk behind the box, like six feet, do my pose and walk up and finish it. And I, the girl behind me kind of did the same thing, but I don't think it really hurt me, but and, you know, some were over a minute and some were less than four my individual presentation you can do a lot more now than you did six you know six years ago they kind of just said basics off you know so i i kind of added a few you know flurry things to mine yeah. which which is always great i mean and it's just again just a marvel of how much this sport evolves you know even over a period of six years it's some divisions become almost unrecognizable and you know just the routines that they have people do and it's just it's it's definitely evolves at a faster rate than I think any other sport that at least I know of is. But uh, what was that like, you know, with the post show, just the post show? Because obviously, you know, you're not going to be able to, you know, keep, you know, somewhat of the even though you are like so you are basically an anomaly where you're not going to obviously be putting on like 30 pounds after a show. But, you know, you aren't going to be able to be exactly that lean but again everyone she's an anomaly where she'll gain like a couple pounds maybe or lose a couple i don't even know because she's just one of those genetic freaks but what was this post show kind of like for you been so far well it probably took me a few days to get that adrenaline uh rush down and i have to say though Rand, i came in so ripped i was no question the most conditioned of the seven and uh, my coach just knew exactly what to do. And we got off the plane, you know, Wednesday and, uh, you know, sitting all day, I was holding some water in the glutes and stuff. And then Thursday morning, I took my pictures and sent them to my coach and, and I could tell they were, I was holding water. So we stayed up in, in the 19th floor of the hotel. So my husband and I, we walked up and down the 27 floors just to kind of get, you know, just get things moving and stuff. And, and by the next day, I looked, I had dropped a lot of water in my glutes. And by nighttime, I looked even better. But um, it was, it, after the post show was just so phenomenal. I had so many people congratulate me. And, and, uh, and of course, I had a photo shoot the week after. So I didn't really, you know, go bonkers too much on my diet and drinking. But I tell you, at my post show was a wonderful pizza at the Manhattan Deli and then had some fettuccine. And then of course we had to have cheesecake and my heart was about, my heart rate was about a hundred beats a minute all night. <laughs> so it was kind of come down. I can even remember both times, the other times I had you on, like you've, yeah, like veiny and just striated, like that's easy for you. And I mean, you, you went like this and like your forearm was basically just, you know, still super veiny now. So you got, you have that down. I mean, at least going into a competition, you're like, okay, that's, that's really what I have. But I mean, dealing with injuries is something that all athletes go through, but for bodybuilding, it affects you even more so because, I mean, you can't work out then, and working out is really how you get to your end goal. I mean, if a baseball player gets hurt, some sports like baseball, I mean, you might not necessarily be able to work out, but I mean, you can still sort of play the sport and function in it. But what is that like for you mentally when that happened, you know, and just realizing that, you know, I got to take things easy now. And even though I made this big, you know, decision that I'm going to go back into the sport of bodybuilding, I am going to have to, you know, slow things down a little bit. Well, my injury fortunately happened, you know, five months out to me, five months out. And I knew that if I could get it back to normal or fairly normal by August 1st, three months out, six, you know, eight or I should say maybe 10 weeks, 
I knew I wasn't going to have a problem. And and probably after six weeks after my first PRP, I could start pulling. I could do lat pulls. And then, of course, I use straps for anything pulling. And so I don't have to, um, you know, use my that flexor tendon. And so I totally found ways to work around it, even if it was light weights. I mean, lat pull downs, you know, 50 pounds or whatever I can handle. And so I, and I, I'm, I'm, my physical therapist was amazing and we figured out ways that I could work around it. And it was, I wasn't that worried about it. And, but once I got back on track and I felt like I was strong enough, I was like, oh man, I can't, I'm just going to, I'm just going to blast through this and give, give it my all. And I had, my prep was really pretty cool. My prep was really great. It was probably the best I had because I had a great coach and, and he had confidence in me and, and I did all my own training. I didn't hire anybody and I took everything slow. I never did anything fast. Everything was slow reps, no swinging. I don't, I, no swinging, no momentum. I was so, so careful. And of course, water, I drank a ton of water because of course, you know, out here in Arizona, you have to. And then I think that I, one of the reasons I tore my tendon is because I probably wasn't drinking enough water, but that was a game. And how much does it mean to you to just realize that like, hey, I can still do this at 65 years old? Because that's got to be something where you're just like, you maybe like 10 years ago, you would have never imagined that you could still be doing this. I never imagined, but I, I really felt great. And um, I see these girls that were competing that were over 60 on some of the NPC on NBC news online websites. I watch them and, and I'm not sure. I mean, I'm pretty sure, you know, they're all enhanced of some sort, but I thought, you know, my face was, my face still was feminine. I still had great conditioning potential. I had just great symmetry. The one thing I was lacking was the mass, but I mean, I had a beautiful V taper, a small waist. I looked feminine. I had great conditioning. I just thought, I'm just going to do it. And as I said, I, a long time ago, I said, if they ever have a 60, I'll do a 60. And then that went, that went in, in the past. So I just couldn't believe 65. And I turned 65 like 10 days before the show. Are there any plans to maybe do another show or was it just a one-time thing? Or Well, I won't do anything now next year. Um, although the bikini divisions, they're adding 60 plus, And that probably would be a better you know, fit for me. Um, I know there was a 60, a 60 show in Florida in bikini the same weekend as my show. So there's, there's at least one and I'm sure that the age groups are just going to keep going up and up and up. And, uh, who knows? pretty soon I'll be having like 80 or 90 year olds on here. Basically, you know, there's, they get off their walkers to come and talk. No, I'm just kidding. But like they no, that's, and that's, I've always said that the older guests are the most impressive ones for me, that they're, you know, still able to do this at, at, you know, really any age, but especially the older ones, just because it just shows all the hard work and dedication that really this entails. So, I mean, obviously with the no cardio, but with the sleep, was anything different, you know, this year being back out of prep, was your sleep affected at all? Yeah. Yeah. That, that was affected. Um, um, it was, I'm not the best sleeper in, you know, normally, but um, I just, you know, I just did the best I could. I took, I took naps in the afternoon if I was tired. But uh, yeah, towards the end, it was a little, a little rough. And uh, so sleep is much better now. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear that. Now, I mean, I don't think I've asked you this all the last few times, but what is the reaction that you normally get? Like, let's say you're working out or like you're just doing pull-ups in a gym or something like that. And people are saying, seeing this older lady just repping things out and just sort of killing it. Do you get like any, what is the reaction to people? Because if I saw that, I'd be like, that's not real. What's going on here? Well, I go to three gyms because um, I joined two when I first moved here. And then we joined one when we joined the golf club. But I'd say at one of them, they all know me. They don't really say much. At another one, it's probably more women that will say something to me. And then at the third gym, it's the older guys. <laughs> and, uh, you know, people are different. They don't, they probably don't want to, you know, interact too much things change in the last couple of years people are not really quite as outgoing with strangers but i mean yeah it's always well at least they'll probably just at least stare or something like that because like if i saw that i'd just be like okay what is going on here like i'm witnessing something but i again yeah it's just it's it's just amazing and i mean with you know the current state especially with bodybuilding 
you know, there've been a lot of deaths in this industry this last year. And I mean, there's even another big one. There's, uh, I forgot what his name was, but it was earlier today that it got announced. So everyone's been talking about it, but what has been your reaction to that? Because I mean, obviously it just, everyone knows about, you know, like some of the enhancements that people do and it, but especially like the diuretics is one thing that's been become more prominent. Like I was fully aware of all that stuff when I, you know, started getting into this podcast, but it just seems like the general public is getting more of a knowledge now into some of the extremes that this sport has people doing what has been your reaction like sort of seeing all this take place and having thing more things come to light this last year well to be honest i haven't really kept track too much of that i did happen to see one younger gal earlier i think her name was megan something and i think she was in her 20s later 20s and i you know i talked to my coach i said i mean what do you think of all this and he says well you know people are not going to die if it's the drugs they just have to stay off the drugs and of course, that's what he's going to say. But um, I don't really pay much attention. I think if people want to do that, then that's the risk they have to take. And I absolutely am against it, all that stuff. And uh, I don't know what they're taking, but I am. I just think it's it's just not good. Not. Good. I've talked to some of them and even that makes my jaw drop, you know, when they finally admit all the stuff that they're, that they're on. And, you know, I, again, like, I'm just like you, or it's like, do whatever you want, you know, as long as you, you know, aren't just like walking up to someone and force feeding them something or whatever like that. But yeah, it's unfortunately it's a part of the sport, but I'm glad it's gotten more attention now because, you know, there's so many people that I've heard. They're just like, Oh, I, I want to look just like you. And they don't know like, Oh, well they're taking a lot of stuff. So they're, first of all, with their genetics, you would never be able to look like them. And second of all, you know, just with all the drugs that they're on, you would not be able to look like that. But it's just, it's, it, it's been an interesting year to say the least, not even, not even talking about COVID or any, or anything like that. But yeah, it's just, it, it's just been fascinating. And so have you found that since your injury, your golf game has gotten back to normal? Are you still able to drive as much as you did before? Did that affect you at all? It is, has definitely affected. And I wear my little um, golf band all the time when I do my lifting on cold days and my golf. And uh, yeah, I cannot, I am, I probably could hit the ball just as far, but I won't. I can't now because I think that tendon in there could go anytime and I just cannot let that happen. But uh, I did get a, a new driver after my 2007 driver, so I finally got an XXIO. <laughs> awesome. And uh, it's pretty sweet. But uh, now I'm just, uh, you know, swinging easy, and sometimes when you swing less, you go farther. Yep. That that is true. My brother did ruin his back once doing a happy Gilmore swing on at a golf course. So he regretted that, you know, instantly. So yeah, you got you definitely, you know, you gotta be careful with that, especially as you get older with your body and I mean, again, it's just still amazing that you're doing this stuff, you know, at, at your age. And what advice do you have for people that are, you know, older if and if they want to just get into this lifestyle? I mean, I've asked you this before, but obviously it's completely different now that you've actually competed in shows, but I mean, what would you say to someone who's just looking to get started, especially at, you know, maybe an older age? Because, like, I've had people on there say, oh, it's 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 not harder when you're 50 as opposed to when you're 27, which is my age. And I always tell them, it's like, you can say that, but, like, let's be honest, it is. Um, I think, like I said before, they need to go to a couple of shows and watch what's out there. And they need to educate themselves as far as which federation to go with. Do they want to do a natural or do they want to try NPC? And, you know, in the NPC, the amateur, they are adding some older classes. And I don't think that the NPC girls at that age are really doing anything, any enhancements. And so I would say just do it. Just go for it. And, it, you know, if somebody's just starting and they don't have any muscle, it's going to take a couple of years to even, you know, get something developed. And Hey, um, if it takes like a weekend, then give me your number and I'll talk to you and I'll spend my entire life savings then just to <laughs> give me all of your secrets then basically then. But yeah, I'm still, I've been searching the entire world. I haven't found them yet. Just that one person that, you know, just picks up one weight and then all of a sudden next thing you know, they're 50 pounds heavier, you know, but it's trying, but trying, but never succeeding. But yeah, it's it's not for the faint of heart. I will say that it's not for someone that wants results yesterday. But you know, hey, I tell everyone, you know, just go ahead and you know, give it a try. But I mean, I've asked you this every time that you've been on too. But it's a question that I just I'll ask regardless how many times I have people on. And you know, if you could change one thing about the sport of bodybuilding, and everyone would go along with it, what would be one thing that you'd like to see changed? 
I think they should stop adding all these divisions, you know, because now there's bodybuilding and physique and then figure and then wellness and bikini. And, uh, you know, because this is my opinion, figure and physique and wellness, the girls, you know, the, the top pro girls, they all are about the same size. But the physique girls do, you know, those great bodybuilding poses. The figure, you know, same size, but they're doing different posing. And then wellness, basically the third group, of they're doing the same, same size, but they're doing like bikini poses. So, you know, don't add any more. <laughs> do you wish that figure let you just do some of those bodybuilding poses or just are you fine with the ones that they have you do? Oh, uh, I would love to compete in physique over figure. Wait, that's my very first show with uh, in Fargo was physique. Of course, it was the first division that it, it, it had just coming out that, that year, 2012. So I did it and I loved it. I just loved all the mandatory posing and, you know, we didn't have to wear high heels like that. But then of course, on my second show, the judges said stick with figure. So I stuck with that. And of course now I'm, I'm even smaller than the bikini girls. So, but I, I don't care. I'm just going to do it. Are you planning on bulking up a little bit? Uh, if you're taking like a year off and waiting for that, are you going to try to put on some size? <laughs> Heaven sakes, no. Uh-uh. I don't. <laughs> Look, I was eating so many, so many calories. I just yeah. didn't have time. I don't have time to eat that much. And I think that's abnormal for to eat that many calories. So like right now I, I'm eating four meals a day. And, uh, you know, that I have, you know, some, maybe some snacks at night, but I'm eating four meals a day and I'm probably consuming maybe 2,300, something like that a day. And, and that's a lot that that's more than a lot of women eat normally. I mean, they're eating 1600. And so I'm, um, I, I feel really good where I am. I haven't lost any weight, any more weight. I probably stepped on this stage, maybe about 120 to something like that. He, he kind of thought that's where I'd have to be with, to get the conditioning. And, you know, I'm, I'm up like two pounds and I love it. I just and and love it. show us the guns. Cause you put your arm up right up there. That's, that's ridiculous. Come oh, on. I'm hot right now. Flat right now. My butt. Okay. Yeah. Just hold that for a second. Oh, I said hot. Oh, hot. Oh, I thought you said you're flat. Right I was there. like, yeah, right. You're hot. Yeah. Good God, everyone. She she, she, she hurts her elbow and she still got it. That's ridiculous. Absolutely. And, um, I mean, obviously being known as the pull-up queen, any tips on people that are working on pull-ups? Because that is one thing that, especially for women, it's a struggle for them and even for guys too, as well. And I mean, just looking at what you're doing on some of those posts that you make, it's like, it's embarrassing at a point for me, at least I'm just like, okay, this is ridiculous, but obviously you're just genetically blessed with being able to do them and just gifted, you know, just the, like you said before, just your leanness really does help. But what are, I mean, anything, any advice you have for people that are looking to get started on, you know, starting to get that, because that's a huge thing for a lot of people is doing those pull-ups. And you know, more and more women on Instagram are doing them. And it's just so great to see. But here's what I think is the two, two things. Number one, if you're light, you're going to have no problem. But if you, but if you're heavier, you better have a big wide back. Otherwise you're just, I mean, if somebody's 140 pounds or 100. 35 pounds, they're not going to, they're not going to be able to do a pull up because they're going to be bottom heavy and they don't have a, a very good back. But if you're 120 pounds, 123 pounds, it's like, oh my, I mean, you just float up because it's just, you know, you don't have that much weight to lift. But if I added a, you know, a 25 pound plate, I couldn't get myself up. But there's just, so you really have to develop a, a wide, strong back. And, you know, you can do all kinds of variations of pull-ups with bands and eccentrics and bowls. And I think lat pull-downs, you have to do lat pull-downs. And my husband was amazing. I mean, he would come to the gym with me and, you know, pull, pull down and resist up. And so it's a lot of work, but, uh, you know, it can be done. I mean, it helps to be like you who you, I remember you said you were doing them since like you were a kid and stuff like that. So it helps to have that foundation. I mean, obviously, but yeah, that's, that's one of those things that is, yeah, it's, it's almost like my, my thing with Kaz where it's like, you either have them or you don't really. It's with pull-ups. It's like, yeah, with that weight. Now, if you're like 205 pounds like me, yeah, you do need to have a pretty, a pretty darn good back, you know? So it's, it's, yeah, you need to work on some other things as opposed to just, you know, working on just just doing the pulls and stuff, but yeah, it's... Oh, they need to have dedicated back days. Totally. From two a week. 
it's yeah that's why i've always you know that's why especially you at your age still cranking them out though is still one of the most impressive things i've seen on on instagram and everything and you know obviously as we look forward to you know this coming year when we do have you on next year because we will have you on because you're just a great guest to talk to what are some things that you'd like to have achieved and not not necessarily achieved but where would you like to be at just in your just in your fitness and just in your overall life where would you like to be at well, I think after about six months of this, you know, pretty strenuous training, I really want to get focused more on the yoga and get flexible again. And, you know, because when you get muscular and you know stronger and there's just not enough time to do everything. So Ronnie Coleman's not doing yoga. I'm just going to say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he probably can't even, you know, who yeah. maybe can't even yeah. touch his knees. I don't yeah. know. But, uh, you know, I just, I just love doing a variety of things. I mean, I bought, and I have to say there's one good thing about the lockdowns last year. I got my bar up in my garage. I got my rings and I bought a whole bunch of kettlebells. And I just love being diverse in, in, in my fitness because it's just so much fun. So much fun to just try. And, I mean, I'd rather be okay at a lot of things than specialize and just only do, you know, marathon running. So I love diversity and that's what I'm going to keep doing. Well, for, I have a friend that does marathons, and I'm like, okay, that's a mental illness, first of all, where it's just like, what are you doing? Why are you doing? I just want to show up with a sign that one of his and just be like, you didn't have to do this, and just, just have that like as a thing. But, hey, more power to him, but, geez, it's like, I, if that's what you want to do in your free time, you know, I got to question my friendship with you, honestly. But, you know, it, it is it is something. But one thing that's really shocked me is with yoga, how people can still get muscular doing yoga. I have never quite understood that. What is that from? Because I have some friends that do yoga and they're in very good shape where they just do yoga. And I was like, wait, you've never touched a weight before, but where does that come from with yoga? Because I have never done yoga. I am for being six, three, I am the least flexible person you will ever see. It will just, it, it won't look good. Like it will, it will look just basically like a whale, basically like trying to do not because I'm fat or anything like that, but just because like, just I can barely touch my toes at times. And like the only reason I never won the presidential fitness award was that stupid um, extension thing that they had you do where they had you do. I couldn't do that. That's the only thing that kept me from it almost every year. So, but what, what about yoga really, do you think really helps people, you know, get, some of them can even get muscular and they look like, you know, they lift weights. Uh, they're just genetically that way. Or maybe uh, like for me, I mean, I just, I teach yoga. I, I teach one class a week just to kind of keep my certification and, and know what? There is a guy in my class that I had a feeling he's less flexible than you. <laughs> hey, you know, I'm 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 more than welcome for the. So, out of the yoga poses, was your favorite pose? Oh gosh, let's see. I like the peacock. You know, where I I probably put some of those on my page where you balance on your basically elbows in your stomach and you lift your legs up. It's just a. It's kind of like. Some people call it the, uh, I think it's called a planche or a elbow lever. Elbow lever is what it's that's, called. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Yeah, that's yeah. Well, it's kind of a fun one. And, uh, but, uh, you know, I just, I just disagree that people are going to get huge and muscular. Oh, oh I don't mean like, I mean like sort of like, sort of like your look where it's like the leaner kind of just like, obviously you're not going to be like Linda Murray or whatever like that doing you. And if you do do again, give me a call. But yeah, when I'm at muscular, I mean like tone. I, I know I hate to see, I hate to use the word tone because it's not, it shouldn't even be a word, but I have to use it in this instance. But I, I, I meant that obviously I'm like, yeah, you're not going to get like super jacked and stuff like that doing it, but like, you're going to develop some muscle tone that people would suspect just from doing some of those. Absolutely. Poses. That's totally possible. Yes. Uh-huh. No, I mean sort of like a, like a Jessica Biel or something like that. Yeah, where it's like it's not like obviously it's not it's not Matt, but yeah, it's I mean I yeah just even thinking about doing a downward dog for me is just making me sweat even right now just being like oh god. But I mean hey, the benefit of living in Arizona, you don't even have to worry about hot yoga. You just go outside and do it. That's right. That's right. I just I just don't get how people could live there, but I mean it's an acquired taste, I guess. But yeah, I have a friend who lives in Flagstaff, and luckily it's sort of closer to the mountain, so it's not nearly as hot, but it's still. Still, still very, very hot, but, um, it's uh, not, not my, just not my choice. Oh, well, yeah. Hey. Oh, so are you ever, are you ever just going to say like, Hey, it's either me or Arizona or something like that. Just be like, make an ultimatum. Go back. Let's go back to the Midwest. <laughs> I've tried that. Oh, you try. Oh, <laughs> yep. You tried that. And yeah. Oh, Hey, you know, yeah, I guess. But Hey, I mean, at least. At least it helps you stay lean, though, because, I mean, if you're sweating buckets all day, I wish – I mean, during the summer, that's when I go out and try to walk the most I can. But now as, now as you get to now where it's like everyone's got to put on their winter weight. I got my beard going now because you got to, you know, stay warm a little bit. But, um, yeah, it's just – again, it's always fascinating to talk to you and having you on, and I always 
you know, really enjoy it. And is there anyone that you'd like to give a shout out to before we wrap things up? Oh, uh, let's see. Well, hmm. I guess I have to say a shout out to my friend Denise Abad out in Long Island, and she, and then um, Evie um, Flag, let's see, Flag, Flag, I don't know. You might have to edit this out. Evie. I have ruined so many people's last names on this podcast. It is no problem at all. <laughs> I think it's Evie Flatter, Flaherty, and she was the one. Us between us three, we all got this promoter to, um, you know, get the get the sixty five. But other than that, I mean, just hello to everybody and. Yeah. No. Absolutely. And, what was the name of the person that won your show? Her name was Missy Sandman. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and see if I can get her on because if she won that show, I was just like, what? Because I mean, some of these, I mean. Cause I'm going to be honest, when you get older, like it's a, it's a crapshoot of what the physiques are going to look like. Just because, I mean, we've had, I mean, I have Maria Flores on here who's 62 years old and she's a physique or she's like an actual like b- bodybuilder competitor. And I'm just like, what, like what, what is that? So it's just, but yeah, so I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to definitely look her up and again, you know, I really appreciate having you on. It's always great talking to you. And I look forward to having you on again next year where maybe we'll wait a few more months into the winter so I can at least have you when it's like, what, 80 or 70 degrees? What's the coldest it gets there? Um, my first winter, it did snow. It was probably 30, 28, and I took a beautiful video, and it was wonderful. And and uh, and the house is just the house cools down nice, and and uh, it's just refreshing and was it kind of, was it kind of like in Texas last year where everyone was freaking out when the cold like or do people have like insular heating in their houses or was it just a a crap show basically? You mean here? I mean yeah, in, 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 in Arizona when it started snow, like were people just like freaking uh, out, losing their minds? I don't think so. I mean, I think people loved it. It, it lasted for a few hours, and you know, by the end. Oh, of the day, okay, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, because it's it's probably started in the morning when it was oh, twenty eight, okay. and then a few hours later it's thirty two, and then it oh. melts. I thought it was like some of those things where like you have one day of snow and the next thing you know, the, the, the whole city shut down for like a week because they're like, we have no idea how to clean this snow off of our, off our streets and nobody has that traction. I mean, my dad is an insurance adjuster and he got so many calls from Texas when people were freaking out because they didn't have heating in their homes when it reached like they were in like 20 degrees, I think was the lowest they got for only like three days. And people were like literally dying because they couldn't, they were just like freezing to death. And it's, yeah, it, it's fascinating stuff. But for up here, you know, being a Minnesotan, it's something that something that we get used to but again everyone go and check her out on her instagram page i'll leave a link down below and you know buyer beware seeing her in some of her videos you'll just be like okay what is this i i feel embarrassed right now so you will get inspired to get your butt off the couch and start working out yourself but again thank you so much for coming on i really appreciate it oh, thank you for having me ryan thanks so much and this is ryan johnson dd on the spot signing off have a great day everyone